Canadian Pension Board is investing millions in Chinese companies, which include Chinese coal projects, undercutting the federal phase-out policy, and we're still waiting for Trudeau's Alice in Wonderland climate law. This is the Great White North Report. All right, so this is a video I was going to make about a week ago, but then I found out that the uh, People's Liberation Army had been training in Canada, so I did that one instead. Anyway, all right, so I found out that our Canadian pension plan contributions are going are being invested in Chinese companies and many of them are subject to security warnings to MPs. We're investing in WeChat which is used by by Beijing for censorship and to crack down on dissent. You have to remember that any company in China that has more than 50 employees must have a Chinese Communist Party member and must abide by their security laws which state that any company must give information willingly to the to the state security. So we're investing billions of dollars, our hard-working dollars, in a company, a social media platform, constantly censors its own citizens. And their WeChat is trying to get into the North American market, and they will do the same thing here. So they've invested over three billion in Tencent. What the hell? It's a Chinese social media platform, and Tencent also holds other many other holdings. And it's part of the board's plan to ramp up allocations in China to 20% of the fund's assets by 2025. Are you freaking kidding me? China, Chinese companies are run like a Ponzi scheme and many of them are failing. There's a lot of shadow banking in China and there's massive debt. Currently China owes about 2 trillion US dollars to Americans themselves, just in bonds, junk bonds and stuff. And they'll never get paid. The same in the UK, but the UK as part of the Hong Kong handover, China, the Chinese Communist Party had to agree to pay those bonds. Many of them go back to the Qing Dynasty. So we want to invest 20% into China. Like, are you freaking kidding me? In China, Chinese people invest overseas because they know their investments in China aren't safe. And here we are pumping money into China. Like China has a $15 trillion problem with economic reality. Like Beijing has offered $15 trillion in government bonds. And there's been a lot of big sell-offs lately. The losses in recent months have been the deepest in 13 years. And here we are investing in them. The CCP in China, the Chinese Communist Party, needs foreign investment to keep itself afloat. And Canada is definitely doing that, that its part. If we pull our funding out, they will it will help them collapse. They know it, we know it. So our brilliant MPs in House of Commons that were told by House security team last year to stay away from WeChat came at a time of heightened tension with China after the arrest of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou at the behest of the United States and Beijing's arrest of Kovring and Spower. The platform continues to remain on servers located outside Canada even after it's been deleted. It is also the platform doesn't pro it's also said the platform doesn't provide end-to-end -end encryption. So it's wide open, they can read what you're saying on WeChat. But protections of user data cannot be assured. Many politicians in Canada and other Western countries use WeChat accounts to communicate with Chinese diaspora in their writings. That's the problem. We've allowed so many Chinese mainlanders in the past 20, 30 years, and they like to use WeChat so they can communicate with their family back home. And the CCP, they use that to their advantage. That's how the Communist Party in China keep keeps tabs on those Chinese who have left and threatens them with their families back home. So they are subject to per pervasive content surveillance. So what they say over here will affect their families back home. Which goes on the next one. The Canadian Pension Board invests $141 million in Chinese coal projects, undercutting federal phase-out policy. Our federal government is phasing out coal mines in Canada, but at the same time, we're investing in Chinese coal mines. It's true. Uh, the Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board is jeopardizing Canadians' retirement savings, undercutting federal government policy, and making mockery of one of the country's few points of climate leadership on the world stage by investing in Chinese coal companies. Meanwhile, Canada is committed to powering past coal lines and its domestic goal to retire coal-fired generation. But here we are, you know, helping the helping the, the climate here, but, but not helping it in China is not helping the world climate. It makes us look good officially, but really we're not. The Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board is, whose declared mission is to help provide a foundation upon which 20 million Canadians build their financial security and retirement. Really, and you're giving it to the Chinese Communist Party? who routinely seize assets of their own citizens. Coal is one of the, and the fact they're investing in a coal mine, coal is one of the dirtiest energy sources around. And here we are investing in it. And I don't know who's on our pension investment board. They should all be fired and put in prison because they're trying to style us up as a climate leader. Meanwhile, they're investing in it. This is the hypocrisy of our government and our institutions at its finest because now Trudeau is touting his climate law. He's bumping up our carbon taxes while at the same time he's in, he's letting the pension board invest in, 
in the same carbon. He wants to achieve net zero emissions. Yeah, that looks good and great on paper for us. It means we're going to have to pay a ton of money for all his little initiatives. But like I said, just because you, Canada has zero net emissions doesn't mean the rest of the world is in. That's what's polluting the atmosphere changing the climate. So I really hate Trudeau's progressive approach to things because it doesn't make any sense. A carbon tax should be directed at those who emit the most carbon tax, carbon, or have rising carbon. The United States has a large carbon emissions too, and that's right across the border, but theirs has been going down for decades as well. But places like India and China, theirs is going up. Those guys should be taxed. They're increasing, not declining. Bill C-12, which would commit Canada to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. And Trudeau says it was ambitious but necessary to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. <laughs> right. Creating good jobs and a competitive economy for years to come. A good, a competitive economy would be our pension plan reinvesting its money back into Canada. That might be nice because decarbonizing the Canadian economy is going to be, is not going to be simple and it's definitely not going to be cost free. So that goes back to our Canadian pension funds. Why are they eyeing investments in China? So they're doing it to help ensure the long-term viability of various social programs. From casinos to computers, pension funds are scooping up deals across China and remaining unconcerned about the current frosty state of bilateral relations or the fact that China is also going bankrupt. Concerns about Beijing's human rights accord is worried some Canadians is worried that Canadian money is helping fund Chinese companies involved in surveillance and censorship efforts. Well, of course it is. If you invest in Tencent, then you definitely are. They also invested $800 million in Chinese real estate developments. Come on, there's so many ghost cities in China. Just Google it. Chinese ghost cities, you know, see what I mean. Investing in a real estate development is, is stupid. And it's also shoddy workmanship. Most construction companies in China go under. Or they're so heavily subsidized by, their, by the government and have massive debt. And here we are giving them money to help with their debt problems. So this guy, Jimmy, Jimmy Few, who is the head of our real estate investments, Asia, he thought he says it's part of the pension board strategy to grow real estate investments in China, particularly in the fast growing retail sector. Are you stupid? This guy obviously listens to reads the uh, all the Chinese propaganda instead of actually going on the ground and going to reality. The problem is where they hang that carrot of the second largest economy, all those people you can sell to. So like I was saying, China's shadow banking sector is facing tough times where there's a lot of unorganized credit creating financial situations that are not subject to regulatory oversight, which means that co big companies consistently borrow money from banks and banks are forced to print more money. It's not a good thing to do. Shadow banking is not, is not sustainable and it will contribute to the collapse of the Chinese economy eventually. Even CNN, the most left woke fake news organization, acknowledges that state-owned companies are in trouble and that could hurt the global recovery. No, it won't hurt our recovery. We'll ship, we'll just shift our supply chains elsewhere. But these state-owned companies are defaulting on their debts and it's gonna slam the brakes on the nation's economy and as they defaulted on 6.1 billion worth of bonds. Their bond market, so a slew of major companies include BMW's Chinese partner, Brilliance Auto Group, top smartphone chip makers, Xinhua, Unigroup, and Yangchang Coal and Electricity, the same thing we actually invest in our Canadian pension plan. And also our Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, they also invest in this this stuff. Declare bankruptcy or default on our loans. So we're, our pension plan is giving money to Chinese companies that are in debt. Good work, you know. And our pension plan wants to go in and invest in real estate. Well, there are enormous Chinese cities that are completely empty of people that they can invest in. Like I said, you just go online and you find these pictures. There are hundreds of cities that have almost everything one needs for a modern urban lifestyle. High-rise apartment complexes, development, developed waterfronts, skyscrapers, even public art. Everything except one thing, people. There's no people. When you have no people, no one's going to buy. That means there's no income, no cash flow to these development companies. And here is our Canadian pension plan. So there's so many other articles I could pull up about this stuff and how stupid our we are. If I could, I pull all my money out of our Canada pension plan and invest it in something I would, uh, I would believe in. I don't know if you can do that or not. It could collapse and our pension plan can be wiped out. That's the hard reality we could face one day. Any Canadians that are, let me know what you guys think about our Canadian pension board investing billions of our hard earned dollars into a Chinese companies. And should we divest as soon as possible from these companies? Leave, leave comments below. And until next time, this has been the Great White North Report. Our taxes.
satisfied.